In this segment, we're going to be talking about the virtual memory subsystem. We'll be dealing with how different processes are stored in memory, how the state is managed by the operating system. We'll be looking at how processes are prevented from touching each other's memory, or how they don't, we, we, this you want to make so that they don't clobber each other's state. Um, we'll be looking at what happens when you don't have a memory and how to improve performance when you have different layers of memory management constantly being done by the operating system. Uh, on our agenda today, we'll first start off with the brief intro of virtual memory subsystem, just the overall goals, what's the general idea behind virtual memory. We'll be then looking at how operating systems implement virtual memory with this notion called page tables. This is fundamentally important uh, to how processes work in the system and how the state is managed. Page tables not only ensure that processes do not touch each other's memory, but also help manage memory. So when you have physical memory running out in the system and processes need more memory. Translation lookaside buffer is a technique to speed up page tables. It's a hardware technique. Uh, it's a hardware mechanism that exists. Um, think of it as a cache for page tables. Then we look at demand paging, where if you don't have a memory, uh, we need to figure out which pages are less important and try to take them out. The general overall theme for the day is a statement by, or is often, that's often a attributed to Butler Lamson, who's a researcher at Microsoft Research. Uh, he made the statement way back in the 60s, 70s, when operating systems were first being designed, that any problem in computer science can be solved by a level of indirection. The overall quote is essentially, he goes on to say that, except for the problem of too many layers of indirection. Um, this statement will become more clear to you as we go along in this um, talk as to what we mean by indirection. But the general idea is that if you want to manage something and you want to multiplex a lot of different processes on this resource, then you need an extra layer of uh, indirection or virtualization that's introduced. That is, you have to virtualize the resource. So a level of indirection can be also thought about as virtualization itself. So what do we mean by virtualizing resources? Essentially, when you talk about virtualization, the sole reason we want to do it, or one of the main reasons we want to do it, is because there are a lot of different applications that run on a system. And when you have different processes that share the same hardware, and hardware is finite, while you could have a lot of different processes running at the same time, we essentially need to figure out a way to multiplex them or manage the hardware resource across these different processes so that we can achieve better efficiency. Right? So if you have one process using the disk, you want another process to be able to use the CPU. So an example of this would be CPU scheduling. We looked at this a few weeks ago where if you multiplex multiple processes on the CPU, when you have a few CPUs and a lot of different processes, the way you achieve that is by time multiplexing, where you vend out time to each process. Right? And so each process really thinks that it's got the CPU to itself, but in reality, it's just scattered across time. So each process gets a finite amount of time on the CPU so that every process gets its fair share. When you look at memory, on the other hand, memory is really a physical resource that is vended out in units. So you have four gigabytes of memory, or 16 gigs of memory. Right? So this is some amount of resource that is essentially state or space. And the way memory is vended out is in chunks. So if you have 16 gigabytes of memory, you partition it into a lot of different uh, four kilobyte pages, and then you vend out each page or some number of pages to each process based on how much space it actually needs. So compared to CPU, which is time multiplex, memory is really space multiplex. It's also time multiplex in the way that when you run out of memory, and you have another process that comes in, a more important process, a higher priority process, then you need to figure out which memory is less important, take it out of the process that's lower, lower prior, of lower priority, and give it to the process of higher priority. Okay, And we'll look at this uh, as we go along. And finally, next in the next few weeks, we'll be looking at multiplexing disks and devices, uh, which are slightly different. 
Okay, so really we've looked at CPU scheduling, which is a form of virtualizing CPUs. We're going to look at memory management or virtual memory, which is a way to virtualize memory or uh, multiplex it across different processes. And in the future, we'll be looking at multiplexing disks, disks and devices. And when you really think about memory sharing or memory virtualizing it, you also need to think about what are we really virtualizing? What is the view that the, prog the programmer or the process really has? So the complete working state of a process is really defined by its memory and registers. So you've got memory which is runs into a few gigabytes or even more these days, and you've got registers which are really quite small. And you would also don't want different processes to have each other, touch each other's memory right? so that you can achieve protection. So if you all, just all of, if you trusted every process in the system, then it doesn't really matter. But as you know, you don't trust most processes. Most processes are downloaded applications. You don't want them mucking around with each other. So for example, this presentation is recorded on a presentation software. I'm recording it in the background with a video pre recording software. And the two, we don't want the two overlapping with each other, right? That would be a bad thing. So. Let's take a look at the basic idea of memory management, right? So what we've shown here on the right is physical memory. So what we have is some amount of physical memory. So this is all physical. And essentially it starts at zero, goes all the way to max sys. Then we, if you think about what physical address space is, essentially it's the address space supported by the hardware. Starting at some address zero, and then going all the way to max sys, right? So this is the memory that's actually, you know, your DRAM, the thing that you buy, the thing you plug into your system, right? So this is physical storage. A logical or virtual address space is the process's view of its own memory. So for example, if, if you had a process that's only needed two kilobytes of memory, and you had another process if you had four kilobytes of memory, you want both of them to be able to run on this physical memory at the same time. Right, because it has four gigabytes. You have more than enough to hold a lot of different processes. But each process itself has a limited view of its own 